On October 19, 1987, the Dow Jones Industrial Average plummeted 508 points, losing 22.6% of its total value. Two weeks later, Time Magazine reported that this time, the world was different. Nope. So Jim, could you tell us a little bit about your Black Monday experience and how did that affect your investing strategy? Well, that's kind of an embarrassing question, a little bit of an embarrassing story. As we talked about earlier, if I know anything about this stuff, it's the mistakes I made. And that was a big one. This was back in 1987, and we need to remember there was no internet, there was no cell phones, uh, computers were, were in their nascent stages. And this was also in a time when you used stockbrokers. And I had a stockbroker, and I had finished a very, very busy and hectic day at work. It was a Monday. As I was closing up, I thought, oh, I think I'll give Wayne, my, my broker, a call and, and see how things are going. And when he answered the phone and I asked, there was a stunned silence on the other side. And he said, you're kidding, right? And I said, no. And it was that point he told me what the rest of the world already knew, and that's that the market had just gone down by the largest percentage it had ever gone down in one day in history. And the market drifted steadily lower and lower over the months. And about three, four months later, frankly, I lost my nerve and I sold. And as it happens, if I didn't sell on the absolute bottom lowest day, it was close enough not to matter. Then when I finally had the courage to get back in, not only had the market rebounded, it had gone past its previous high. Because I'll be honest, while I can sit here and say, you've got to be tough and you've got to ride it out, it's not easy. And even I was nervous as it kept going down, down, and down. And some of the smartest people, when it was near its low, were predicting that it was go going to go even lower. Well, clearly, though, you've recovered from that mistake. Absolutely. It set me back a little bit, but the learning experience set the course for a much more successful path. And it also reinforced the understanding that the market always goes up. It's a wild and rocky ride, but it always goes up. The chart represents the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Can you spot Jim's 1987 blip? It's there, but it's not quite as scary in context. Taking a step back to look at this chart, you should notice three things. First, the trend is relentlessly up through disaster after disaster. Second, it's a wild ride all the way. Third, there's a big, ugly event. But let's talk about the good news. We'll discuss two and three in a later video. We can see from the chart that the stock market always goes up. Let's consider why this is. Can you guess how many of the original Dow Jones stocks are still in it today? Just one, General Electric. In fact, most of today's companies didn't even exist when Mr. Dow created his list. This is a key point. The market is not stagnant. Companies routinely fade away and are replaced with new blood. Think about it this way. What's the worst possible performance a stock can deliver? It can lose 100% of its value. Then, of course, it disappears, never to be heard from again. As new companies grow, prosper, and go public, they replace the dead and dying. The market is self-cleansing. Now think about the top performers. What is the best performance they can deliver? 100%? Certainly, that's possible. But so is 200%, 300%, 1,000, 10,000, or more. There's no upside limit. As some stars fade, new ones are on the rise. Stocks are not just little slips of traded paper. When you own stock, you own a piece of a business. These are companies filled with people working relentlessly to expand and serve their customer base. They are competing in an unforgiving environment that rewards those that can make it happen and discards those that can't. Combine those two points and the net result is a powerful upward bias. But note, this only works with index funds. Once professional management starts trying to beat the system, all bets are off. They can, and most often do, make things much, much worse, and they always charge you more fees to do it. We'll talk a bit more about this in a later video. All you need to take away from this video is that we have access to a wonderful wealth building tool that relentlessly marches upward, although it's a wild and unsettling ride. Find out next week why that wild ride is exactly why most people lose money in the stock market. Like this video series? It's based on excerpts from the book, The Simple Path to Wealth by Jim Collins. And we just scratched the surface. Click here to learn more about it. Thanks for watching.